With the explosion of inexpensive remote-controlled aircraft combined with high-resolution digital cameras, it may seem that we're in the heyday of aerial photography. But people have been taking pictures from the sky almost since the dawn of the camera itself. Even before Orville and Wilbur took their famous jaunt around the skies outside Kitty Hawk, cameras were occupying the airspace through the most low-tech of lifters, the kite. Well, I like stuff that flies, and I like taking pictures, so I decided to take advantage of a beach vacation with friends to try something I've always wanted to. Nice nylon kites are pretty expensive, so I decided to build my own. The world is full of people who both own and know how to operate a sewing machine. If you're not one of those people, having learned this lesson the hard way, my recommendation would be to just buy a kite. Not having the benefit of someone else's hindsight, I came home from the fabric store with $20 worth of ripstop nylon and began cutting, assembling, and hand stitching this entire thing myself. Before I was even halfway through, I realized how big of a mistake I had made, but it was too late to quit. This design is just a scaled up version of a Star Wars kite I bought from Walmart. A few hints if you do decide to do this. You can use a lighter to melt the edges of the ripstop to keep it from fraying. Fold along the center often to make sure that the pattern is perfectly symmetric. And if you have a cap, lock him in another room. The camera is attached to the kite string using a peak of a mount. Its purpose is to dampen the motion of the kite string. You still only have two points of support, so it will swing side to side, but the camera will maintain its general orientation regardless of the movement of the kite line. My first test was just wobbling it by hand in the hallway, and it seemed to work fine. If the cat isn't interested, you know there's a problem. The maiden voyage of the kite aerial photography rig was on the beach of Port Aransas, Texas. We took a quick video to see if she would fly, and it worked, which was exciting. But the kite was acting a bit unstable, so we brought it down to do some field adjustments. Next I set the camera on interval mode to take some still photos. If you have a GoPro, you probably have some photos of yourself making a dumb face while you try to turn the camera on. We all got together for some kite selfies. Then my brother kept it close for a while to make sure the kite was sufficiently airworthy. It looked good, so we let it out a bit further. We wanted one more video of the beach from a higher altitude and longer duration, but right as we were letting the kite out, I bumped the camera with my arm and smeared sunscreen all over the lens. So the last video came out a bit blurry. I'm obviously not a kite builder, and if you want to try this for yourself, there's a lot of info out there from people who actually know what they're talking about. On the other hand, if it's windy enough, you can tie a string to just about anything and fly it. There's nothing wrong with trying something just to see if it'll work, and when you have no idea what you're doing, it's a lot more fun when things end up working right. And if you're on vacation and you want your friends to think you're really cool, let me know if you figure out how, because it's definitely not with a homemade kite. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think.